We are going to talk about what I like to call advanced privatized banking. What is this? Advanced privatized banking is a banking system that's been around for hundreds of years. That's right. The Rockefellers use this, Walt Disney used this. Most of you already know what I'm going to talk about. It's infinite banking concept, right? It's that stupid, specially designed whole life that that guy, Chris, is always talking about. But yeah, you guys always show up. So obviously you like hearing about it, but now we're going to show it in a different light. Advanced privatized banking is the, the banking system that we do at the Money Multiplier. It's how we show you to do all those things we just talked about that we're not taught to do. Number one, how nice would it be if you could just take back control of your money? Woohoo! Then you don't need the sign. See, all those people that are doing those silly things with money, I just need them to wear a sign that just says money problem. And then I'll understand, kind of like, like that guy was saying, you know, if people just wore a sign that said stupid, you'd know like, oh, okay, I see the sign. Got it. Understood. It's not a dumb question. I see the sign. Well, the money problem sign is very real. So we got to solve the control problem. We got to take back control. This does that. Okay. We got to beat inflation. Okay. We got to have our money somewhere that's going to beat inflation right out of the hole. Got that covered. Guaranteed. None of that variable nonsense. Guaranteed. We're beating it. Okay. Not by a lot, but we're beating 3.2. Okay. What else do we need our money to do? Well, how about having access to it? In your CD, if you take money out of your CD, what, CD, what do you do? You give up some interest, don't you? Well, we don't want that. We want the ability to put our money somewhere and take our money back out without interrupting anything. Okay. How about we want to make some money over and over, right? We, we want to believe in compound interest because that's what you've been taught. You've been taught to believe in compound interest. But the problem with compound interest and the way that we've been taught is you got to park your money somewhere and leave it there in order to earn compound interest, which is why we all, when we did that, we were talking about high interest rate savings. We were talking about, you know, online savings accounts. We were talking about CDs. We were talking about all these different places, which is where we put our money to earn that interest, which is compound interest. But wouldn't it be better to take an additional step and get uninterrupted compound interest. In other words, we put our money in that CD, but then we can take our money out of the CD and the bank graciously just decides to keep paying us interest on the full amount in that account. Well, your bank doesn't do that, but this privatized banking system sure does that. Specially designed and engineered whole life sure does that. So we're just getting warmed up. But now let's, let's dive in. People love seeing numbers. So in order for me to show numbers, what I do is I just show you my newest plan. This is literally my newest plan. Welcome to it. It's a small plan. It's being set up for Viviana, my daughter, okay, which we're going to get into that. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to take 10 grand a year. That's $833 a month. Now, I don't want to say that this is the only amount you could do. A matter of fact, I should have put more into this, but this is just what I, what's what I want to do. I have seven of these things. So to do another 10 grand, it was a big step for me. Okay. To do an additional 10 grand when I got seven more of these things, I, that was a lot for me, but I did it because I wanted to set Viviana up. Now, how did I set Viviana up? What am I trying to do for Vivi? Well, someday Vivi's going to need to go to school. Okay. Larissa is always talking about sending her to private school. Okay. So that's going to cost some money, isn't it? Then when she goes to college, she's going to want to go to a good college. Yeah. Probably, I don't know. Larissa's doesn't know what you know, school she would go to, but she's going to go to a good school if she decides to go to school. And that's going to cost some money, right? It's going to cost some money. So that's what this is being set up for. But now if you're thinking long-term for a goal, college, for Viviana, that's 17 years from today. What would we normally do if we were trying to set up a college savings plan for a child? Well, we'd normally contact an advisor like Mr. Noggle, when I was an advisor, okay? And we would say, all right, hey, I wanna set up a college savings plan. What do you got? I'd pull out a bunch of fancy brochures with some average rates of return on them. Don't get me started on the rate of return. And I would then start showing you all these different accounts called 529s, UGMAs, UPMAs, uh, College Sense, College Planning, all these different things. All of these vehicles makes it so that I would have to then give the money over to that account and give the money there. They are then in control of the money fees on that money because it's some type of investment or CD or something, but there's fees in one way or the other. And then I have to just leave that money and it just sits there until Viviana goes to school 17 years later. And if I want that money back out of almost all of those accounts, what happens? I get some type of penalty. I have to pay some type of tax on it. There is, it's a one-way street. Okay. I can go down the street, but I can't go the other way on it. Otherwise I have to pay the price. This account right here, is nothing more than what I'm doing for Vivi's college. But you see, this account works very different. I can put the money in, I can take the money out. 
There is no one-way street. This is a fast-moving, two-lane superhighway that when I put the money in, I can take the money right back out. So here it is. I'm not going to get too deep into the numbers, but here's my first five years. Now, I remember I said your money's got to be moving like a river. So if I just put 10 grand in there and I just leave it, which is what this shows, I'm not making my money work for me, am I? I'm just putting my money and leaving it in that stagnant pond. But my stagnant pond actually is a little bit better. I got a little spring Okay, in the middle of my stagnant pond gives a little bit of oxygen. So it's not quite black. It's still nasty, lots of algae, but at least I got a spring because I'm beating inflation. But I'm not going to leave that money there. No way. I put 10 grand in. This is, this is what's called a mass mutual heck fee. Okay, it's not the right plan for everybody. And pretty soon I'm going to have one of the most incredible trainings you have ever seen on IBC. And it's actually going to be a live training with a real client, walking them through the entire process and how we work with our clients. Many of you are clients. And we're going to show you how we work with you, how we solve your problems. We're going to show you how we do the plan designs. This is one of the four plan designs that we do. And then how that plan design then goes to our mapping team, how we do the mapping, how we do the tool which is the cash flow tool. And then at the end, it shows which one of these designs solves your problem the most efficient way. Isn't that the way everything should be? Start with the problem. Okay. Start with what it is you want. Then figure out how do we solve that problem and what is the best design. So in order to do that, there's not one way to solve a problem. There's many ways. We got to find the best way. Okay. So that's why there's so many tools out there to fix things because there's not one tool that's the best. There's lots of different tools and each one does something a little differently and a little bit better, some worse than others. Then after we figure the tool out and we got our design, then we need to see which one of these tools works the best for your particular situation. That's what the cash flow and the mapping does. We're going to walk you through that entire training. But here, what you're looking at is just my plan over five years. I put 10 grand in, I can take 9,200 out in the first year. I put another 10 grand in, I got 19 grand in there. If I didn't take any money out the first year, I'd have 19 the second year. And then I keep going and I do that. But really, if we did the math on this, let's just do year three. So in order, if for, so you guys understand, I want to teach you something. And many of you have seen this already. But if I just want to figure out how much money do I make? What is the cash flow? I would take third year, 29,433, 29,433. And then I would subtract the prior year. Okay. That would tell me my cash flow. So subtract 19,090. Whoops. Shoot. I got to redo that. Fat fingers. 433 minus, darn it. 29,433 minus $19,090. That means I made 10,343, but that year, the second year to the third year, I put in 10 grand. So I got to subtract what I put in. I mean, that's my new deposit. So I made $343 from year two to year three. So right here, I could write 343. That's how much money I made. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but if I divide 343 into 10,000 bucks, I made 3.4%. Did I beat inflation? Yep. Did I have full control of my money? Yep. Because I could have taken that out and I could have taken that out and I still would have made the same interest rate. But let's keep going. Let's do fifth year. Okay. Fifth year, I got 51,126. 51,126. Subtract the prior year. So if I take year five minus year four, which is 40,055. Whoa. I just made 11,071, subtract out that $10,000 that I deposited that year. So you can see here, year four, I deposited 10 grand. So I subtract that out. Now, a very short period of time later, I now made $1,071 on my 10. You see, this is what uninterrupted compound interest looks like. I'm just trying to show this to you. I know I got a lot of things on the screen, but I take 1,071 and I divide that into that year's deposit, 10 grand. Holy smokes, I just made, you guys could have done the math. I made 10.71, I made 10, 10.7%. 10 Sorry, it's hard to see because I'm using red when I should be using a different color, but I literally just made 10.7%. Is that more than inflation? Darn right. Now I'm moving in the right direction. And it doesn't matter what direction I go. If I keep doing these numbers, if I keep going down, the numbers keep going up. They don't ever go any other direction but up. Wouldn't that be a really good thing? But now, that's all good and great, but hold on. I already said that your money's got to be moving. Your money right here, what I just showed you with those returns that you were getting all happy about, that's your money not moving. You haven't done anything with your money. I would be mad at you. If you were my client and this was you, 
So I'm talking to myself. And all I did is park my money here and let it sit in that stagnant pound because it had a little spring. I'm like, well, it's got a spring and I'm beating inflation. Who cares? Wouldn't you want to make more? Yeah. Well, to make more, what do I got to do? Move, right? Move that money. That's all we got to do. So let's move it. Let's show you. So here's just those returns I already showed you. So five years was, you know, 10.7, 11 years, 96%. Cash on cash, true numbers. If we went down to the 10th year and we went year 11 to year 10. So if I subtract 117, 559, okay, and I'm just going to, let me get my pen out, get a different color here. So if I take 117, 559, and I subtract the year before, which is 109. So year 10 from year 11. Okay, what that would give me is that would basically give me a number. And then if I subtract out a deposited that year, that would give me 3842. That's how much money I made. So I deposited four. Now I want you guys to understand this. This is kind of important. This is only 10 years down the line. I put four grand in and I had 3842 to take out. I put four in and I made 3842. I didn't put four in and only have 3842. No, no, no. You're missing the math there. If, I, if you did the math, I put four in, I can take my four back out and an additional 3842, which is a 96% cash on cash return. Is this how your money works now? Is your money doing that? If it is, great. I'm happy for you. It should be doing this. This is what we should be taught to do with our money. But then comes the next question is how do we move that money? Well, I, I had to folks, sorry. That's Viviana, just so everybody knows, this is the first 18 years of her life, the financial planning that I'm doing, the financial plan that I'm setting up for Viviana. And you know, we always ask, what is your why? What is your why? Well, that's my why. So Jan said, don't you just need to divide the total deposit, not just the 10,000? Yeah, you can do it that way. I did it the long way, Jan. I just sort of showed, I wanted people to get in the habit of taking the one year minus the other year. Then you subtract out the amount of your deposit and you divide that in. So you're correct. So she's just doing the math a little differently, I believe is how she's saying that. But yeah, so that would be how you do it. So there's Viviana, that's my why now. Here is the first 18 years of me using this plan. Hypothetically, this is how I would use it. So how would I use this plan? Here's now, I also want you to focus on something, folks. I'm only going to give you the guaranteed numbers. Before I gave you the numbers with the dividend, but now I'm only giving you the guaranteed numbers. So these numbers are going to be less than what you were seeing before because I'm not showing you the dividend. So guaranteed numbers only, okay, which is 4%. So here's what I do. I put 10 in. I have a guaranteed 92.57 I can take out the first year. But let's just say first year, I don't have anything to use that 9,200 for which most of you would, but I, I don't. Second year, I put almost 10 grand in. I put 9950 in and I have $19,077 in there, guaranteed. But I don't have anything to use for it. But then year three, I put another 9,950 in. And now what do I do? Well, my buddy, who's a real estate investor, gives me a call and says, hey, I need to take a loan for a property. I need to fund the renovations. And I say, great, I'm gonna charge you 12% interest and he says, okay, perfect. And then I'm going to take security of a lien on your property. So now it's a securitized loan. So there we go. We got 12% that I'm charging on this 25 grand. And then what I do is I basically loan that money out for two years. So I take 25 grand here. I loan it out for two years. But the first year I take five grand, I pay it back. The second year I take 20 grand when he gives me the final balance. I've repaid the plan back to 25 grand. But what you're not seeing is the interest that I just made there. Now, what is 12% on that? So I've done the math. 12% over 12 months uh, or 12% 12 on 25 grand is $3,000 a year, $250 every single month. So this loan is literally paying me $250 a month. Now, what I'm not showing you is I'm not showing you that $250 going back into the plan. That's right. I'm not showing that 250 going back in the plan. I'm just showing me keeping $250 a month each year. So that means over the two years that I had this loan out, hypothetically showing what I just did, how much money did I make at the end in interest? Well, I made $6,000. Now, what did I do with that six grand? I blew it. I did. I just went out and I blew it. I didn't put it back in the plan like I should have. I just went out and I blew that money. That's all I did. Okay. It was an extra 250 a month. I don't know. I went out and I spent it. Darn. How much money did I make over here? The same amount I just showed you. Those returns that I showed you a second ago in those first five years, I made the exact same interest rate 
is, is what you saw before, even though I took the money out, but now I got an extra 250 bucks a month to go out and do whatever I want with. So Jan said, so the return would be much less wise. It should be based on the total. Oh, Jan. Okay. Hold on. I got to answer this folks. We got to go backwards here. Let me do this, Jan, because it's very important. Jan is, is doing what every other person does. And I missed a, an important step here. I didn't miss a step. It's just, this is what you're taught. So hold on, let me go backwards. So what Jan was doing is the cumulative return, which means, and this is what you mostly do. So cumulative return is not how you're going to calculate return using these vehicles. Cumulative return is what you've been taught to do when, because what have you been taught to do with your money? Give up control and leave it sit somewhere to earn returns, right? Give up control, let it sit there and let it earn a return, which is what Jan was talking about. So if we took this money, if we put in 50 grand over five years, okay, this is cumulative and we have 51,000, okay, that means we made a net of 1,000, whoops, 1,100, I'm just trying to do this, 26. So what, this is what Jan, and we can do this for any year, I'm just picking the fifth year. So that right there means you would take 1126 divided into the 50,000 that we put into the plan. I made only, oh, that sucks, Jan. I only made 2.2% on my money, actually 2.3. So if that's how you're doing the math, that's because that's what you've been taught to do. But does cumulative return, is that what works for what we do here? No, because remember every single year, if I have 9,200, I'm going to take that money out and I'm going to go earn 10% on that money. Okay, I'm going to loan that out. The second year, you know, whatever that is, let's just say it's 9,800. I'm going to take that money out and I'm going to go earn 5% because I'm going to pay off a credit card or a loan. Okay, the next year, how much do I have? I put in 10, I have 10,300. So I'm going to take that 10,300. I'm going to take that out and I'm going to loan that to my buddy at 12% in a private loan. Okay, the next year, I don't know what that is, four down three. So let's just call it 10,100. It's more than that, 40 minus 29, whatever that is. But whatever, I'm going to take that amount. Let's just call it, uh, let's call it 11 grand. Okay, I'm going to take that out and I'm going to earn, go out and earn 3%. I'm going to pay off a low interest rate credit card. And then the, the final year, I've got 11,000. I put 10 in and I got 11 and I go out and I'm going to earn 12 on that because I'm going to loan it back to that same guy for that another flip. So each one of these years, I, how much am I making each year? I'm making, as, as it's shown here in 2020, my 10 grand the first year is earning an interest rate of 4% plus a dividend of 2.2 in this plan. So I'm earning 6.2. How much am I earning the next year on 20,000? Even though I took it all out, okay? I took 19,000 out, it's gone, it's gone. It's out there making, my first 9,200 is making 10%. My second, uh, 10, 9,800 is earning 5%. My third, 10,000 and change is earning 12%. My fourth, 10, 11,000 is earning 3%. My fifth year, and again, all I'm doing is I'm putting money in and I'm put, taking it out. Okay, that's why cash on cash return is what I'm talking about here. So what Jan said is what about the cost to borrow money for the plan? I'm glad you brought that up. See, I have all this figured out. Jan's just getting way ahead of me here. The cost to borrow money is 5% simple interest. Okay. So what was the return? I can't remember what it was here, but whatever the return was, you're, if you're earning 6.2 on the money, what is your net? Okay. 6.2 minus five is 1.2. Okay. That's the spread. So how much did I make? Well, I didn't actually, I made 6.2, but by taking all that money, I had to give the insurance company five. So I made 1.2. Now let me ask every single one of you a question. How many of you would be okay making 1.2% on your money that is no longer in your account. Literally, the money's not in your account anymore. You took it out. You put 10 grand in and you took out 9,200. You put 10 grand in the second year, you took out 9,800. You put 10 grand in the third year, you took out more than 10 grand. And you're still making 1.2 the first year. But you see, that's just the first year. So what about year five? What was our return there? 10.7, okay? So 10.7 was our cash on cash return minus the 5%. Okay, what is our return? 5.7, if I'm doing my math right, 5.7, is that right? So I made 5.7% net. 5% is gone. The insurance company, you got to understand, 5% is gone. The insurance company is charging you interest on those loans that you're taking out of 5%. But we already know that the insurance company is charging 5%, which is why I'm doing cash on cash return each year, because each year you're seeing the impact of exactly how much money your money's making each year or how much money you're losing. So year one, 
even if you're making 6.2 over here on your money. So if you, you took that money out here, you took it out. That means now you got to pay the insurance company 5%. So you take 6.2 minus the five. Okay. And there's also a cost for this insurance. So you got a death benefit over here. If I die, Viviana is going to get $435,000. There's a cost for that. And I don't know what that is. That's why I'm netting the numbers out. All these numbers I'm showing you are net of all of the cost in the plan. It's the only way I can show it. If I lose five here, but then how much did I say I was making on that 9,214? Was it 10%? So now I make 10% over here because I'm using that money. So I made a spread of 1.2. Okay taking the five out and then I make 10 over here on the money. So the first year is the worst year, no matter how you do it. But I'm just trying to help you guys understand. Jan is, is trying to you know, understand what I'm saying. And, and I just didn't get there yet. I have a slide for it, but I just kind of going backwards, Jan, just to help you understand this. Cause I truly want you to understand how this works every step of the way. I want you to understand all the fees. We did a, another uh, webinar where we, that's all we did is talk about all the negatives with this, all the negatives, but I don't care how many negatives you throw at me. Like I love when people question this because there's an answer and I want to get that out. So if you're earning 6.2 on this side and to, to take and borrow your money, it costs you five, but this 6.2 is compounding every year. So year one, you're earning 6.2 on 10 with the dividend. That's assuming the dividends don't change next year. So the next year you put another 10 in, now you got 20 grand in there. You're earning, if dividends don't change, 6.2 on the 20. Third year, 30. Fourth year, 40. Fifth year, 50. You're earning this, well, let's just call it the 4%, which is what I'm doing on Vivi's. You're earning the 4% guaranteed on the full 50. How much money is there in your account? Well, it's all in there. Actually, all 51,000 is there, but how much is actually out being used and making money? 51,000. That's what I mean. It's a raging river. Your money's got to be moving. We're constant. When we put money in, we want to have a place to take it out. Pay off Visa. When you got 19, when you take the next 10, okay, you take that out, you pay off Amex. And all you do, whatever you were paying Visa, you take that money, you put it back in the plan or put it in the segregated account or you know, loan that money out and blow it like I show with Vivi's. But all you're doing is you're just moving money in, you're putting it in, you're depositing it, and you're taking it out. Putting it in, taking it out. Is there money that the insurance company is charging you? Yes, it's 5% right now, 5%. So the insurance company is making 5%. They're tickled pink, man. They're so damn happy to give you money at 5% that they, they just, it's a big line item for them. So the insurance company is certainly charging. The insurance company is making money here on the death benefit. They're making money here on this, and they're charging you a $50 policy service fee per year. Okay, that, that's all the fees. You got a cost of insurance, $50 policy service fee, and interest rate on the loans. Great. Now all that's out of, the, out of the way, right? We got all the bad stuff out of the way. These numbers I just gave you folks already takes all those into consideration. So is cost really an issue in this? A lot of people want to try to make it an issue, but cost is only an issue in the absence of value. Did I not just show you the, the value? So Natalie's saying, is the 5% uh, locked in? No, it, it is variable. So the 5% interest the insurance company charges is, is variable, but I've been in this business since 2003. At New York Life in 2003, the interest rate we used to charge on the loans was 5.25. How much is it today? Five. That's how much it's fluctuated. It really, they don't change the interest rates a lot, but can they? Yes, they can. It's very important to know that interest rate the insurance company charges is variable. The dividend that the insurance company pays currently 2.2 for this company here is not guaranteed. What is guaranteed is the 4%, okay? And I will also say one other thing about the dividends. Today's dividends for this company and many of the other companies that we deal with are at 30 year lows. Go back in history and look at what the dividend was last year, the year before, the year before, the year before, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, higher than it is today. I like saying that because, hey, we're looking at worst case scenario or potentially worse. They could go down next week, but hey, who knows? Or I'm sorry, not next week, next year. They could go down, but all I can tell you is they are right now the lowest that they've been in 30 years. So let's see, Jan's still going. Jan said, how can they pay 6 point, well, 6.2, 4% guaranteed plus 2.2 and charge you 5% and make any money. Oh, Jan, I'm not going to answer that one because that's, that's, that's kind of just there, but I will say, here's your sign. But they, they absolutely, I'm joking with you, Jan, just messing with you, trying to have some fun. Um, they absolutely are making money. Insurance companies basically print money. And I showed you they're making the, the 6.2 that they're paying you over here on your money. Remember, that's because of smart investments that they've done for hundreds of years. They've taken your money and everybody else's money and, and their own surplus money and gone out and bought treasuries 30 years ago that were paying double digit returns. And there's 
they're still riding the co-trains on that. They own real estate. They loan money out. Like they're one of the biggest lenders. Insurance companies know how to make money better than any financial institution that there is. You don't believe me? Look it up. But anyway, I got to keep moving on, Jan. And we'll, I, I, I love that you're participating and I love that you're doing it. And I hope that that helps everybody because you know what? Sometimes we got to stop, pause, and just get all that nonsense out of the way. Let's talk about all the bad. But it doesn't matter how many bad things we try to talk about. I'm telling you, we can just talk all bad. We've done this in a live and in training. We did a whole two-hour long training, me and Brent, all about the negatives. And you know what we couldn't do? We couldn't find that. We found all the negatives, but we couldn't make them make sense. It still always made sense and worked. So let's go on to this plan here. So now I want, all I'm trying to do here is trying to show you how I'm actually moving the money and how much I'm making. So remember here, I made 6,000 bucks. That's just on what I made on the money. Okay. That's not how much money my plan made. My plan made exactly what I just showed you it was making. So you can do the math there. I'm just making an extra six grand by lending this money out. Okay. Then I, I get all the money back. I'm just going to pick on Chris Rude because he, he's one of the people that I lend money to and he's open with me saying that. Then Chris Rude finds another deal two years later and he's like, I need 40 grand. So I take 40 grand from my plan. I loan it out at 12%. How much money do I make on 40 grand at 12%? 4,800 a year. So 4,800 a year is what I'm making there per year. Now, do I show any of that 4,800 going back in the plan? Nope, $400 every single month extra just coming through the door and my money, what, what direction is this? Even though I took all this money out, what, is my number going down? No, it just keeps on, keeps on going up, doesn't it? So I took the money out, what, what keeps on going up? Well, yeah, because I'm paying it back. I take the seven grand, I put it back in. The next year I put the remaining balance, 33,000 back in. My number just keeps going up, but then I still, earned uninterrupted compound interest on every penny of this money the entire time. You got to remember, every penny of every single deposit that I make is earning interest, even when all this money is out there working for me. That, so that was that, 4,800 there. But I'm not done. Remember, I got to keep this money working. Chris pays me all the money back. Now I loan him 60 grand. How much do I make on 60 grand? $7,200 per year. See what I'm doing? Every year I'm getting a freaking raise. Every year, the money I'm making off of this dumb, stupid, specially designed whole life just keeps on making me more money. Now we're nine years into the plan, only nine years. Every single year, except for the first two years, and I could have used the money, but every single year, I got my money out there working. My little marching dollars are out there earning me more money, and all I'm doing is I'm taking the money out, and then I'm putting the money back in. Taking the money out, putting the money back in. I'm recycling and recapturing the money as I do this. Is there any more money that I'm spending here outside of the original $10,000 a year that I decided to do? No, for the first 10 years, all I'm doing is putting my 10,000 in. But how much more money am I making? Well, the first two years, right here with this loan, I made you know 6,000. The next two years, it was, uh, what is that? Uh, 10,200 or 10,600, the 4,800. Then the next two years, 7,200 a year. So that's uh, 14, 14, four. Okay, and then here we are, 80. On 80 grand at 12%, I make 9,600. So that's 9,600 this year, 9,600 this year. But I don't, I don't do that. I don't keep that money. Remember, Larissa is spending that. But you know what? That loan is getting paid back over here. So that's what I do the first 10 years in this plan. I could keep going. I just wanted to kind of show you how that would work. Now, what else could I do? Well, if Larissa wasn't blowing the money or I wasn't spending the money, could I have taken that 250 a month that I made from that private loan and taking that money and put it back in the plan? Sure, these numbers would do what? Just go back up. Wouldn't that just mean that I had more than 40 grand to lend the next year? Darn right. I would make a lot more money because I'd have the 6,000 here or 60,000 plus the 4,800 I made the prior two years plus the 3,000 I made the prior two years before that, all on top of that. Could I have just rolled it back in? Yeah, but I'm just showing the money. I'm just showing me making money and using that money to live on. Because, hey, look, it, I can teach you how to be really good with money, but you also have to enjoy your life. And, you know, wouldn't it be nice to make an extra 250 bucks for just having your money move every month? Wouldn't it be nice to make an extra $400 a month right here every month? You're not working any harder for that money, folks. That money's, that's just your money working for you. Is there risk with that? Yeah, if Chris doesn't pay me back, there's risk, but then I just take his property. Okay, down here, $800 a month. Am I working any harder 
for that? Do I have to work more hours? Do I have to stay later? Do I have to put in overtime to make that extra $800 a month? No, folks, that's just my money working for me, but my money's working twice as hard because remember, this income right here is just what I'm making off of the loans that I took from the policy. Remember, the policy on every penny that's in here is still making that 4% guaranteed plus the dividend as of 2020, the dividend on this company, Mass Mutual, is 2.2%. Getting in the weeds a little there. All right, so you guys understand that. Now let's keep going. Got more where that came from. All right, so now we're going to go to the next year, college. So now we get to Viviana's college. She's got by the, I'm 61, which is frightening. So 17 years old, she goes to college. We've got to pay for it. So how much do I have? Well, I got 174 in age 17, 185 age 18, and 197 age 19. So what does that mean? Well, right here, I take out each year. And remember, I'm only dealing, so I, I want to be clear about this because I'm kind of talking about dividends, but I want you to understand these numbers I'm showing these are the guaranteed numbers. When we ran this, these are the guaranteed numbers, the cumulative guaranteed, which is only the 4%. I discount the dividend. It's not in there, okay? Because I just wanted to show you both ways. So Vivi goes to college, year four or 17. I take out 40 grand. I pay for her college. And then what do I do? Well, if I, if I took a loan for college for Viviana, either she's got to pay it back or I got to pay it back. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to repay that loan, 20 grand. 20 grand, 20 grand. These are just me being an honest banker and paying the money back to my policy. The next year, I take 40 out, I repay 20. I, next year, I take 40 out, I repay 20. I, next year, I pay, take 40 out. So what is that? So that's $160,000 for college. $160,000 I just spent to have Vivi go to a really good school. And I'm sure college will be more than 40 grand then, but we'll just take more money out, okay? Because you can take more, you can see it here. And then all I do is each year, I just repay myself the amount that I would normally repay a bank or a financial institution or the, you know, the FAFSA loans or all the financial aids and all the, the student loans that I hear about every single day. All I'm doing is I'm just repaying those money, th that money. And you know what I just did? By doing what I just showed you, I literally got all the money back for college that, that Vivi went to. I literally got all the money back because all I did is I was an honest banker. I just repaid myself. But all it was is this stupid plan that I started back, what is it, 17 years ago for Viviana, putting 10,000 away per year. And then after the 11th year, I could only put in 4,000. So it started at 10, but now after the 11th year, it's only four because of the IRS MEC 7 pay rules. So all I'm doing is I'm just, again, showing money out, money in. So Viviana goes to school. But what else, what else is really cool about this? This is if she goes to college. What if Vivi decides not to go to college? What if she decides to chase her dream somewhere else, do something else, not go to college? If she decides not to go to college, what can I use this money for? I don't know. 130 grand will pay for her to go on a surf excursion trying to be a pro surfer. Oh, that fails. Great. Next year, 140 grand. We, we basically got that money. You know, whatever it is, whatever year she needs money, that money is there and she can use it for anything she wants. Unlike a 529 that you got to use for college. And if it's a state run 529 because you wanted that state tax deduction, you can only go to school at that particular state college institutions. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying there's restrictions here. There's no restrictions. Whatever she needs the money for we have the money there for her and the money just keeps on growing you see that just keeps on going up every year it just keeps on going up and these are the guaranteed i wish i i would have done this with the dividends so now let's just keep going on beyond this i retire okay so i actually then decide that i want to live my perfect day every single day so what do i do i go back to this plan that i set up for vivi's college and what do i do I look at the numbers and I say, okay, it's 63. How much money can I take out? Well, I look at each year, how much money my cash value additions grow. And I look at how much cash I have in the plan. And here's my returns, cash on cash. So each year, that would signify how much money I can take. Now, this is just a supplemental retirement. This is just one tiny little plan that I put 10 grand a year into. Hardly my sole retirement, but let's just look. So from 63 to 64, if all I wanted to do is just take just the interest out of the plan, it's 224, 181 minus 210, 375. That's 13,806. But I also, I had to put four grand in. So that's $9,806. So I, the reason I did that is 
$9,806 isn't going to get anyone excited, but that's me just stripping just the return I made that year. So in other words, I put four grand in and that four grand with compound interest made me $9,806. So I deposit four and I take out 9,606 or 9,806. Could I take out the 9,806 plus the four grand? Darn right. I put the four grand in, I can take the four grand out. So four grand plus 9,806. Okay, that's 13,000. So if I wanted to just take my deposit plus my interest out, that's 13,000 divided by 12. That's an extra $1,150 a month, more than some social security payments. And all I'm doing is I'm just taking the gravy off the top. That's all I'm doing here. Not taking the full amount. I didn't even touch the principal. I just took what it gained. And each year that thing goes up. Here's my returns. I don't know many retirement plans that are going to be paying to those kind of returns because they don't have the perpetual tailwind, which is the uninterrupted compound interest that has been happening in this case for in this right here for 20 years. I've been earning uninterrupted compound interest every single day of every single month of every single year for 20 years. Hence, why I can make those kind of returns. It's not trick math here, folks. It just looks too good to be true, but all it is is just math. It's the same math Albert Einstein describes as the eighth wonder of the world. Those who understand it, earn it. Those who don't, pay it. Pick a side. That's what he says. It's Albert Einstein. Read it. So age 65, what I'm doing here is I'm doing it different. Let's say I didn't want to just take out that little bit of interest that I just showed you. Let's say I actually wanted to take out a sizable amount to retire. Anyone looking at this? Now, folks, this is very important to see. This is probably my favorite, favorite slide. And I'm gonna change the color just because I'm so pumped up about this. So I want you to really look at this and I want you to understand what we're looking at here. So I am now 65 years old. I have put money into this plan now for 23 years. 10,000 for the first 10 years, 4,000 every year thereafter. I'm only looking at guaranteed values. I got 173,000 in there. What do I do? I take 60,000 bucks. Now, in the first couple of years, just because it's early, I'm going to show repayments, probably because I'm really just continuing to repay that money for the college, but I'm just showing 20 grand being repaid. But see that? After I put that in there, which actually in the illustration, I probably should have just got rid of that, but it's there. I don't put any more repayments because now I'm done. I don't want to repay any more money. I just want to enjoy my life and I just want to take income. So I take 60, 60, 60. Folks, also, this is all tax-free, just so you know. Because all I'm doing is I'm taking money from my death benefit. Every one of these loans reduces my death benefit. But my death benefit also is growing. So you don't really, it doesn't look like it's going down, but it really would be going up even more if I wasn't doing this. I take loans and loans and loans and loans over the course till I'm 84 when I die. I didn't, dying probably was a surfing accident in 84 or maybe, you know, snowboarding accident. I've taken out $1.5 million. Okay, $1.5 million and I put in 227. I want you to just remember this plan that you're looking at here, it funded private deals for investors. Those deals could have been mine too, but I show them just as private investor deals. It funded Vivi's college and whatever else she needed. Then it funded my retirement as shown right here, 60,000 a year. I took out 1.565 million tax-free. I only put in 227,550. These are the guaranteed numbers so I can use the big G word. Folks, this is how this works. This is the power of using privatized banking, the infinite banking concept, and doing everything that I just told you we need to be learning how to do with our money, which is treat your money the same way the banks treat their money. Move it. Move your money. Keep it moving like that river and constantly recycle and recapture the dollars. Here's what people think infinite banking is. They think it's a product. They think it's a magic bullet. They think it's some widget that fixes everything. Folks, infinite banking and the infinite banking concept, also known as privatized banking, is not a product. It is not the specially designed and engineered whole life. And I want to debunk this because honestly, I get it all the time. Listen, people hear me talking about infinite banking. They're like, oh, whole life insurance is a terrible investment. True. If you bought a regular whole life off the shelf and you just bought it to, to basically put your money there, it probably wouldn't be the best place for you to put money. So right there, that probably gets some people saying, what the heck, Chris? I mean, isn't whole life what you use? Yes, it's what we use, but it is not infinite banking. Infinite banking and the infinite banking concept 
is a process. It is a banking process. It's you taking back the banking functions in your life. And this obviously is a very misunderstood thing because constantly, all the time, when they hear infinite banking, sometimes when they hear privatized banking, they think, oh, that's that whole life thing. And they instantly dismiss it because they think they know what they don't know. Let me recite one of the most important quotes you're ever gonna learn in your life. So pay attention. Here it is. Will Rogers said this. Will Rogers says, the biggest problem in America is not what people don't know. The biggest problem in America is what people think they know that just ain't so. Stop thinking you know what you don't know and learn how things work. So I've got a great little presentation on what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the infinite banking concept is. And I'm also going to then show you that it is not a product. It is not a magic bullet. It is not for everybody. Not everybody can qualify for it. And it is not all about a whole life policy. What it is about is about capital. It's about you taking back the banking functions. It's about you creating wealth by taking back the money that you're giving away to everybody else. Banking. Banks figured out how to make money on you. They figured out how to take your deposits and loan those deposits out and then make money. They figured out how to charge you interest. They understood uninterrupted compound interest and they found out what Albert Einstein called the eighth wonder of the world. And that is those who understand compound interest, earn it. Those who don't, pay it. You've probably heard that before. So let me show you what the infinite banking concept is so that I can kind of finally debunk this. And so people can stop thinking that it's all about the whole life insurance policy. The whole life insurance policy is nothing more than the machine that we use to move the money. That's all it is. It is literally the machine. The money goes into this machine. Let's just call this thing here. I'm going to try to draw like kind of a, you know, let's just draw like a big engine here, right? This is this is your engine. I don't know if I'm going to do a very good job of drawing this, but you guys have all seen big engines on big monster cars, right? This is the engine here. And then you got your headers coming out of it. This is your blower. So that's a big fancy engine right here, okay? This is what the machine is. It's the machine, the engine. All we're going to do is we're going to take and put capital, our money into it, and we're going to then have it move it out. The money in and money out. But let's let's really get into the fundamental reasons why the infinite banking concept has been used for hundreds of years. Let me show you why it's been used by so many wealthy people, why it's used today by most of the wealthy families in the family offices. And I'm going to do it with a very simple example that was given to me on my podcast the other day. I thought it was brilliant. I truly thought this was brilliant, the way they explained this. And here's how it was. Now, I want you to visualize and, and imagine a loan that you have, right? So I want you to come over here, and we're just going to draw a big line right here. And I want you to imagine that on this side, you have a loan with the bank. And for simple math, it doesn't matter what your loan amount is, but I'm just going to write $100,000 loan. Let's say you have a business and you have a $100,000 loan and the bank is charging you, I don't know, let's just say 7%. Don't get hung up in the numbers, folks. It's just an example here. Okay, the bank is charging you 7% interest, which, and I'm not gonna amortize it, this is how much interest you would pay per year, $7,000. So in doing that, what you're doing is you are paying $7,000 every single month to a bank. And you don't even think anything of it because that $7,000 is just the capital that you have to deploy in order to have that 100,000 that you needed for your business. So let's do this monthly because we're very good at understanding monthly. So right now you are giving away 500 and $83 a month. That is your loan payment, right? That's your loan pay, 583 a month. And you're fine because you got the capital. You got access to your capital that you needed for your business. Now, let's say over on this side, we're gonna call this side your asset column, right? This could be your asset and this could be your liability column. So over on your asset column, let's just say you've got some stock. And I don't know, let's, um, what the heck, I don't, I don't know what company to pick, but let's just pick a, a stock company that's done well. Let's say it's Apple, right? So over on this side, you own Apple stock. 
And Apple stock has done really well. So you decide to basically close out your Apple stock portfolio. You decide to stop putting money into it. And you basically have assets of you know your stock portfolio. Let's just say it's worth a hundred. Let's just do the same math. It's worth a hundred thousand dollars. Now over here, when you had Apple stock, let's say Apple stock is paying you, I don't know what the dividend is, but let's just call it a 2% dividend, right? They're paying you that 2% and you're making $2,000 on that, plus the capital appreciation. Now, remember stocks move up and down, up and down, up and down. So let's just assume that you got an opportunity to sell Apple at a really high price and you took that opportunity. So you walked away with $102,000. So you got $102,000 sitting over here in the bank or in your brokerage account, but it's not earning anything right now. So here's what the infinite banking concept says is logically, let's just say we got a hundred grand over here, but let's just say this isn't your money. This could be someone else's too. I, I want you to understand this could be your money or it could be somebody else's, but we're focusing on this is your account. This is your savings account. So you got 102,000 over here earning less than 1%. And then you got this loan over here for a hundred thousand. Most people would just keep the money over here because this is their safe money, their emergency fund money. Infinite banking would say, do this. Let's take this hundred thousand and let's loan this money over here. So you're going to basically take this hundred thousand and you're going to take it over here and you're going to take that hundred thousand dollar loan that you have with the bank and you're going to pay it off. Most people would normally be okay with doing this. They'd take the hundred grand from here and they would basically move that money over to pay off their loan. But what most people wouldn't do is take the $583 a month that you were giving to the bank and take that $583 and then recapture that. So then you recapture that over here. So now what you're doing is you've exchanged $100,000 from the asset side to pay off your liability. And now you have $583 a month coming in. Now, again, whatever the amortization is, you are now making the same return that the, you were giving away to the bank, which was 7%. You're making a 7% return. And how much risk are you taking here? None. You are already giving $583 per month away to the bank. Now, all you're doing is you're paying $583 over to your side. That's the banking function. Let's go round two. Let's do one more. And I'm going to use a different color pen here. I'm going to use red. Let's do this one more time. Okay. Let's pretend that that was this loan. But now let's say you got $100,000 in credit card debt. And again, it could be 10,000. It could be 5,000, whatever your credit card debt is. I just want you to get the picture and 100,000 is a nice, easy number to do math. So now you wouldn't be paying 7%. Let's just pretend that your credit cards charge you 20%. That's a pretty common interest rate that you would be giving to the credit card. So now let's just do this. Okay. You got a credit card and they're charging you 20% interest. So let's do the math. Okay. So that'd be, well, that's simple math. It's $20,000, but what is $20,000? Let's just do this. Cause I like just kind of showing you guys that I still need to use calculators. So 20 grand divided by 12, that's $1,600 a month. Now, if you only had 50,000, just cut these numbers in half, right? It doesn't really matter. That's $1,666 a month that you are giving away every single month, just like you used to give away that 583 on that loan. But now we're talking about a credit card. So, but well, let's just say you have this money over here. Maybe this money is money that's in your 401k. Maybe it's money that's in your bank account. Maybe it's money that's in a brokerage account. I don't care where this money is but this money's over here earning less, okay? And I gotta get rid of these because now we're doing a different example, okay? So now what we are gonna do is just like we did before, the infinite banking concept, taking back the banking function in your life is nothing more than taking back the money that you're giving away to everybody else. You are graciously giving away $1,666 a month, just an in interest. You're not even paying anything else off but the interest. If it was 50 grand, it's half that. You guys can do the math from 100 grand down to do your situation. Well, let's just say we took 100,000 from this side, okay? Whatever your account is. So we take 100,000 like we did before. And all we do is we pay off this credit card. We pay off the credit card. So now your debt's gone. You took this lazy money from over here. You paid your credit card. And now all you're going to do is you're going to recapture, okay? You're going to recapture 
we call it recycle and recapture the money that you were giving away to the credit card company. Now you have $1,666 every single month coming into your account, which represents a 20% return. It's the same return that you were giving away, but now you're keeping that return. Now let's go one layer deeper because now you're starting to understand this concept, right? All infinite banking is, is you taking back the banking function in your life. And if you control your capital, which most of you do, you just don't know how to make your capital work. So what could this hundred grand be? And we already talked about it. Could be your bank account. Okay. Could be your brokerage account. Could be your 401k. Could be the equity sitting in your house doing nothing. The equity in your house is sitting on your couch doing nothing but eating your potato chips, your soda. It's not working for you. So this could be anything. I don't want you to really get too caught up in exactly what that is. But imagine now if we, so we already showed you how the banking process works. But imagine if what we did is we changed just one thing, just one thing. And now we took this money, okay, this 102,000, just because I'm using the same math, 102,000, we take that money and let's just say all we did, and I know that that's, you know, we're pro you're probably not able to see that. So let me scoot this over this way. We take this $102,000 here, okay? And we change one thing and we move that money into a specially designed and engineered whole life policy. So we're going to call this the infinite banking policy. This is that whole life that everybody thinks the bank, the infinite banking is. So this is your whole life. So now if you do that, what you have done is you've taken this 102,000 and you have now allowed your money to earn a guaranteed 4%. Now I'm going to put a big G here because that's the only time I can ever do this. This G stands for guaranteed. The insurance company guarantees you 4% on your money, but wait, there's more. Plus it gives you a dividend every year because we use mutually owned insurance companies. We use very specially designed policies, not the same one you'd get from the insurance store, not the one your advisor does, not the one your agent does. They probably don't know how to do this. These are designed for banking. Now, if we're now making 4% on this side, but you see, if you had the money in your bank account, if you had the money in your brokerage account, if you had the money in anything else and you took that money out, the interest, the earnings and everything else stops when you take that money out. You see why we use the whole life, why this machine, this engine is the whole life is simply because we now have the ability to put our capital in this specially designed and engineered whole life. And then we have the ability to take that capital out without interrupting our interest. So imagine if your bank allowed you to go into your bank take the money that's in your bank account out. And the bank then said to you, Hey, no problem. You're, I know you're taking all your money out, but what, how about this? Let's just, let's just keep paying you 4% on the money in your bank. And we're just going to make you a low interest rate loan where that's going to be less than what you're actually paying us. Now, imagine if you could do that with your bank, but well, you can't, your bank doesn't work that way. Your brokerage account doesn't work that way. Your 401k doesn't work that way. Your stocks don't work that way. When you take the money out, you stop the compounding effect. You stop the uninterrupted compound interest because it's interrupted now. The whole life allows you to borrow money from the insurance company's general account. So what you're actually doing is your money, your 100K that you've got, or I'm sorry, it was 102 we were using. Your 100, we'll just use 100K. Your 100K stays in your account earning 4% plus dividends. Okay, so let's just call that, let's just use 6% as a number. So now the next year after one year, you have 106,000 that is now earning 6% times 6%. You get the drift. You guys know how compounding works, right? Every year it's compounding at a higher amount. So that's great. But now we need to take a hundred grand out to pay off these loans. <clears throat> so we take a hundred grand off to pay this credit card out. So now 100,000 comes out as a loan. Okay. So we take a loan from the insurance company. And what we do is we move it over to this side, okay? And we pay off that credit card, which was a hundred thousand bucks. So we do the same thing we were doing before. We're gonna pay that credit card off and that's gonna free up $1,666. Then we're gonna take that 1666 like we did before and we're gonna put that back into your policy. This is effectively earning you a 20% return. But now remember what I just said. When we took that loan out, we're not taking our money. 
We're taking the insurance company's money. The insurance company is lending us money from their general account. And now I know what you're all thinking. At this point, you're thinking, I don't want more loans. Why would I take a loan to pay off a loan? That doesn't make any sense, Chris. Because this loan that you take, the insurance company technically will never ask for that money back. Why is that? Well, that specially designed and engineered whole life also has a death benefit. Sorry, my, my drawing's getting sloppy here, but there's a death benefit. So now let's kind of, let's go one more page. I'm just gonna freshen up the page because that page is getting sloppy. So now we're doing the same thing. So right now we took that 102,000 bucks. We put it into that infinite banking policy, which is a specially designed and engineered whole life. That's all we did, okay? That whole life, the insurance company has guaranteed us 4%. Okay. They've guaranteed to pay us 4% plus a dividend, which let's just use a hypothetical 6%. We've got that there. Now over on the other side, remember, we've got our credit card debt. And again, I don't care if it's credit cards. I don't care if it's a loan, whatever it is, but we're just going to say you got a hundred thousand dollars in debt and that debt is costing you money. I don't care if we use the six, let's use the 7% again. Let's do that. Okay. You're giving 7% away, which is $7,000 every single year is leaving your household. We already know that that's what's happening. And we know that we've got 102,000 over here. So what we do is we take from this side and we move it to that side. We take a loan from the policy, okay, for $100,000 and we pay off the debt. Then what we do is we take this $7,000 a year in interest that we were giving to the bank and we take that and we put that back as a recapture, or as you might want to call it, a loan repayment to yourself. So you're becoming the bank here, okay? Because what you're doing here is you're just repaying yourself the same money that you were giving to the bank. This seven grand now becomes seven grand over here that repays the loan that you took from your policy. But a second ago, I started talking to you about why the insurance company still pays you 4% plus dividend on your money, even though you took your money out and why they don't care if this loan ever gets paid back. And the answer to that is because there is a debt benefit that the insurance company promised to pay you. And that debt benefit, let's just say that's 500,000. They are just going to subtract the $100,000 loan from your debt benefit. So if your debt benefits 500, the insurance company just does a switch of numbers because they got to pay this out someday when you die no matter what the insurance company has to pay that debt benefit out when you die so if you took a hundred thousand in a loan the insurance company just says well no big deal you don't have to pay the loan back and we will just then pay your beneficiaries the net the debt benefit minus the loan that's the simplest way so that's why these loans don't need to be paid back but you're going to be an honest banker. You're going to treat your money the same way you treat the bank's money. And just like we showed before, without the machine, you're going to repay yourself, your bank, the money that you are giving to the credit cards or the banks. And that means now you just recaptured $7,000, which means you pick up and make a 7% return in this. And if you remember, if it was the credit card, so if we did this with the credit card, it's the same thing. $100,000 credit card at 20% was $20,000. So if you're doing this with 20 grand, now you're recapturing and making 20%. You get the drip. So that's the banking concept. But here with this machine, with this infinite banking policy that we talk about, that everybody wants to think that's what infinite banking is, it is not. It's just the machine we use because this machine allows us to earn uninterrupted compound interest on every single dollar that we put through that machine. And then it gives us control of our capital. You now have effectively regained control of your money. You right now don't have control of your money. If your money's in a 401k, a brokerage account, a bank, you are effectively not in control of that money. Somebody else is. We've been taught to give up control here. This is you taking back control of your money and you now have unlimited access to your money. You can use your capital. This hundred grand that's over here, you can take it out and use it and still continue to earn that compound interest year over year over year. And the only thing you have to do is this loan that you take, you have to give the insurance company simple interest. 
Hopefully all of you understand simple interest because simple interest, if it was 5% means 100,000 loan, okay, that 100 grand you took out times 5% is 5,000. But you know what? If you didn't pay that loan, whoop, 5,000. If you didn't pay that loan off this year, next year, guess what? It's 5,000. But up here, how much did you make? Well, year one, you made 6,000. Year two, you make more than 6,000 because now year two, you're growing on $106,000 because year two is the 6,000 in interest plus the 100,000 that you have. Okay, so now you got 106 earning 6%. So how much is that? Times 0 0.06, whoops, $106,000, okay, times 0 0.06, now means you made 6360. So the next year you're growing at a rate of, let's see, 106, 360, you are now building the next year on 112, 720. And if that loan doesn't change, you're just paying five grand. So each year, this machine, the specially designed and engineered whole life just keeps getting better and better and better. It's like a fine bottle of wine, folks. You just keep making more and more money no matter what. And if every single year you put money into it, you took that money back out, guess what? You keep making more. But the banking function, the thing that ticks me off is this is not what infinite banking is. Infinite banking is a process. It is the banking process. It is what I explained on the first one where all you're doing is you're taking money from one side, you're moving it to the other, and you're capitalizing and recapturing the money that you are giving away. You can do this to buy cars. And if you do it to buy cars, it will show you, you will see very simply how you can get all the money back for every car you're going to buy driving home. You can get all the money back for every boat you're ever going to buy driving home. You can get all the money back for the quarterly taxes. You pay the government every single year for your business taxes. I could go on and on and on, folks, but it only gets better. That's why it's called infinite. There's nothing you can't do this on. But stop thinking. Stop thinking that the infinite banking concept is all about the whole life policy. The whole life policy is just the machine that moves your money the most effective and efficient way. And this is what infinite banking is. This is what it's always been. This is what privatized banking always is. Now, tell people what you learned, share this, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and go out there and find somebody that understands how to build this machine the right way because they're not, not all whole lives are created equal. And I can tell you, if you get the wrong whole life, if you just buy a whole life off the shelf or from your insurance agent, it will not work the way that I just described it. So folks, I hope this helped because I'll tell you what, I'm sick of seeing it and I'm sick of people saying that, oh, that infinite banking, whole life's a terrible thing. Fine, if you think whole life's that bad, which I just proved that it's not, then do it the other way. But for crying out loud, learn how to take back the banking functions in your life because the people that are constantly hitting on this and, and being negative on this are the people in that statement from Will Rogers. The biggest problem in America is not what people don't know. The biggest problem in America is what people think they know that just ain't. So go out there, have a good day, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll see you on the next one.